Hi class, my name is Mohammed Prince and this is my week four discussion post. So the crisis I'm gonna be discussing is earthquakes. So a major California earthquake can affect a majority of the state and its residents. The event can be several minutes long and the aftershocks can also be several minutes long. An earthquake really affects all industries and services that operate in the affected area. Emergency services will be impacted the most. The construction industry will also be greatly affected by having to repair the damage caused by the earthquake. You can see in the picture, the damage that happens in a grocery store from an earthquake. Um, lots of hours it will take to clean up this type of damage. So at the three minute mark, a leader would be a civilian. Um, and uh, from chapter one, transformational leadership. Um, transformational leadership is defined as a leadership approach that causes change in individuals and social systems. Um, it's an ideal form. It creates valuable and positive change in the followers. Um, the end goal is developing followers into leaders. The next from chapter two is autocratic leadership. Autocratic leader does not take input from other members of the team when they're making their decisions. Their operations, methods, processes, and uh, work delegation are all decided by themselves, the autocratic leader. In essence, autocratic leadership is pretty much the opposite of democratic leadership. So at three hours, the emergency services supervisor would be the leader. Um, and, uh, from chapter three, situational leadership means choosing the right leadership style for the right people. It also depends on the competence and maturity of the followers. There are many situations in which situational leadership is especially appropriate. One example could be sports teams. Fre they frequently experience changes due to team members, um, coming and going. This means the strengths and weaknesses of the entire team are constantly changing. Chapter four is charismatic leadership. Charismatic leadership is a form of professional guidance or management built on a foundation of strong communication skills, persuasiveness, and even a little bit of charm to help them get the most out of uh, their team members. So at three days, um, a leader would be a government official. So chapter five was the self-management theory. A self-managed work team is a small group of employees who take full responsibility for delivering a product or service through peer collaboration without a manager's guidance. This team often works together long-term um, to discuss and make decisions about a particular process. Chapter six, moral management. Moral management is management with ethics, um, a state of ethical excellence and the practice of implementation of the moral maximization principle. Moral management strives to follow ethical principles and while moral managers also desire to succeed, they seek to do so only within the parameters of ethical standards and the ideals of fairness and justice. Moral managers pursue business objectives, which um, involve simultaneously making a profit while engaging in ethical behaviors. So at three weeks, um, the leader could be a nonprofit leader. And chapter seven is, um, Shared leadership. Shared leadership involves maximizing all of the, the human resources you have in an organization by empowering the individuals and giving them an opportunity to take leadership positions within their specific areas of expertise. Chapter eight is a competency-based leadership approach. The, this approach, um, competency-based leadership Approaches are used for very different purposes. They tend to be used for applied purposes, but can be 
used for scientific purposes too. When large data sets are analyzed for leadership trends or a high degree of explanation is needed for the competencies that accompany a universal situational factor. So I just want to say thank you for watching my video and I look forward to watching everyone else's.